Hello, it's Elder here. I'm here with my buddy Bob. Bob doesn't say much, but he's here to assist me a bit later in this video in conveying some information over to you. What I'm going to be discussing today is the tactical flashlight and uh, its viable use as a self-defense tool. And basically, I want to share with you three mistakes that I see uh, students making often in my tactical flashlight course. So this is just an introduction to get you hopefully started, give you a few exercises to be able to get you to feel comfortable deploying your tactical flashlight. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first mistake that I see uh, happening often is the way that they're accessing or drawing the actual weapon, right? To be able to deploy it, you gotta get it in your hand. Before we even worry about that, we have to worry about where are we going to attach this flashlight. You have to think about your natural operating environment. Are you in a cold climate? Are you gonna have jackets on? Do you normally operate with gloves on? Or are you more convenient keeping it in your pocket? For me, this is where I like to keep it because this is where I keep my folder. This is where I continually practice with my folding knife. So this movement of me reaching in my pocket, being able to get a shirt out of the way, has really been ingrained in me with thousands of repetitions. So why am I gonna change that up when I add a different tool, right? We wanna keep that muscle memory working for us, not add more confusion, especially in a combative situation. So keep aware, I usually have a shirt, I wear it on the outside, so I know that I always have to kind of get that shirt out of the way because if the shirt's covering up the light, right, and now it's a combative situation, I can't breathe, I'm nervous, all sorts of stuff is happening, the last thing that I'm gonna be able to do is fumble with this shirt. So if I don't practice getting that shirt out of the way, reach, really reaching in there, right, like I'm really trying to get to the bottom of that pocket, hold on to that tactical flashlight and bringing it out, not gonna bode very well, right? So you have to be aware of where you're attaching it on your person. Some people might put it on their belt, other people in their pocket, some people inside the jacket. Whatever you are going to, or wherever you are going to attach it, make sure that that's where you're practicing from so that you get very proficient with that. The exercise that I would like for you to practice is to, let's say for argument's sake, this is an area in your home that you walk by multiple times a day. What I would like for you to do is place your tactical flashlight there, and every time that you walk by it, practice your draws, okay? Drawing your weapon. So, we're drawing your tool. So I have it here, I just walked by for the purpose of the scenario, picked up my flashlight, now I'm gonna practice drawing with it. And what I want you to do is to do 10 repetitions. So I'm placing it in where I would normally place it, all right? For you, it might be different. I'm um, here, I'm going to practice 10 times. One, reaching in there, getting it into my hand. Place it back in, do it again. Two, placing it back in. And what, what I want you to do is every time that you walk by this flashlight daily, you're gonna do 10 repetitions. From there, you're gonna put it back into your carry spot and you're gonna do 10 repetitions with your opposite hand. All right, so if you use the right to begin with like I did, now you're gonna use the left and getting it in there, deploying it, pulling it out. I mean, obviously you're pretty much aware in a combative situation, you could use Obviously, they feel the loss of uh, being able to utilize your dominant hand, or it could be occupied with your opponent, right, doing something else, or it could have a different primary weapon, whatever the case may be. So you definitely do not want to be a one-trick pony. You want to be able to deploy both hands, and that's only going to come through practice. So exercise number one, 10 repetitions of drawing with your right hand, 10 repetitions of drawing with your left hand. Okay, common mistake that I see, number two, has to do with striking or the lack of striking correctly. So when we are looking at our flashlight, there's basically two grips that we're going to utilize, or two positions. So first one would be a reverse grip, okay? So picture this, the actual light part being the front of the light. That's kind of down towards the body, all right? So this would be the tip of the flashlight or the tip of the tool that you're using, right? So the tip would actually be down, right? So that would be, let's say, a reverse grip position. And then your other position would be a forward grip, all right, where the tip is up pretty much, okay, on the front of the light. So the two things that we're looking at, obviously we're trying to keep this as natural as possible. We're not trying to make a bunch of martial artists here. We're just trying to get good exercises and good tools so that we could bode well in the situation and get the hell out of there and survive. All right, so I prefer in this uh, situation to utilize a reverse grip. I feel like I get more power. I can put more of my body into it. All right, as opposed to a forward grip that might work well for stabbing, let's say, with a blade or a fixed blade, but I'm not going to get as much power, as much destruction using this in this forward position grip. Is it still a viable grip to utilize with the flashlight? Absolutely. And we'll get into that in a couple minutes. All right, so what I really want you to think about here are the two strikes, keeping this as natural as possible. 
we want to think about our target. So we have Bob here. We know that his eyes, nose, teeth, throat, okay, groin, knees, ankles, all of that stuff are really areas that hurt like hell, right? If you get struck with them with anything, let alone an aluminum or aircraft grade aluminum tool that you have in your hand. That's gonna hurt, right? All of this stuff is going to hurt, especially if you're hitting those right targets. Right, so when we're thinking about the reverse grip, we're just thinking about a backhand. Right, so if you play tennis, you know, play golf, whatever the case may be, trying to think of those natural movements. Okay, so that when you go ahead and deploy, you're light. You're just throwing a natural backhand. Natural backhand. Of course, I place my thumb here. Right, trying to keep it short up so that you'll dislocate it or whatever the case may be. But that helps to keep it in the right position as opposed to not having the thumb there and it's going to slip. Right, and slip. Remember, in combat of situation, you're going to sweat. Right, your limbic system's taking over, everything's going crazy with your nervous system, so on and so forth. So if you're like me, you'll start sweating, you know, whatever the case may be. So that's gonna bode even worse for being able to deploy that. So that's why I like putting my thumb there. The opposite of that would be the forward grip, where you kind of don't have that luxury of placing your thumb, thumb as somewhat of a backstop. Right, so you can tell as you're stabbing through, it's gonna come through, obviously I have a loose grip, just for the purpose of the demonstration. Right? But at the same time, it's still valid, right? Because if I were to deploy this and I end up in this position, I go to the eye, I go to the teeth, I go to whatever. I mean, you have this little edge up here on a lot of these tactical flashlights that really like to find those little grooves. So they would bold well for you against the bad guy to give you some time to uh, get the hell out of there, all right? So getting into some, uh, some simple exercises. We want to go back into our drawing, okay? Of being able to draw first so that you can get into the right position to be able to strike with your flashlight, okay? Same scenario that I gave you early as far as, earlier as far as exercise. Keep it in an area in your home, office, whatever the case may be, that you walk by 20 times a day, right? At least, and let's say every time that you walk by it, we're gonna do these exercises, okay? Now we're kind of putting them all together, so once you have the drawing down and you're feeling comfortable with that, we can move to number two with the striking because it's still going to grab it, Go ahead, put it in your pocket, so you're still gonna include the drawing aspect of it to you know, shore that up for you and get more comfortable with it with your continual practice, okay? And then from here, what I want you to do is find something. If you don't have a bob or a heavy bag or whatever the case may be, hang up a, a stuffed duffel bag, whatever the case may be, just something that's gonna give you feedback, all right? And at the same time, you know, something that's not gonna destroy you know, your flashlight. So you know, keep that in mind. If you have to, put a little bit of electrical tape if you feel bad scratching it up or whatever the case may be. But, you know, at the same time, let's be real here, guys. You know, this is a self-defense tool, you know, primarily that you bought it for. So if you get a couple scratches on it, you know, because of your learning process and your education, then I think it's okay, all right? No big deal. Get a Sharpie and color it back in. Um, so keeping that in mind also is you don't want to hurt your bags or hurt Bob or whatever. So go about 60, 70%. What we're trying to do really is reprogram our nervous system, get those little nuances, get that muscle memory built, uh, that proprioception, all of that other stuff, you know, put in together. So, you know, keep that in mind. That's really the main point here, not destroying your joints and everything else, as well as whatever tools you're working on, all right? So the practical application, once again, put it back into the location that you're gonna carry the most. Mine happens to be in my pocket. I'm going to go ahead and draw it, right? Coming up. And from here, I'm going to get into that reverse grip position, and I'm going to practice just throwing a strike. Okay? Putting it back in there, drawing again, getting it back up, getting into my reverse grip, boom, right? Boom. And then from there, you could go ahead just 10 times, get your 10 repetitions in, feeling comfortable, right? Put it back into there, All right? From there, same scenario as before, we'll practice with the opposite hand, getting that into here. Getting into your reverse grip position, once again, going right back into there, practice your 10 strikes, right? Just throwing back hands, hammer fists, just very natural movement, all right? And you're gonna do 10 of those. Once you're done with 10 and 10, with the reverse grip, we're gonna go ahead with the forward grip. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead, move it out of the way, put it in there, bring it up, I'm in my forward grip, and just basically going with the stabbing movements. So once we do 10 repetitions with the forward grip, trying to hit vital targets, feeling what it's all about, put it back in, repeat with your opposite hand, drawing, pulling it out, deploying it, deploying it, deploying it, just simple stabs, movements that you made over and over and over, naturally in life, whether you're a martial artist or not. All right, so that is exercise number two. 
Mistake number three, gripping. There's usually two culprits, either over gripping, right, or gripping too tightly, causing muscle fatigue, rigidness, uh, lack of mobility. And then the flip side of the coin is too loose of a grip. And now they end up stabbing or going to hit and they end up getting disarmed, right? So either way, you're resulting in disarm for either over tightening or keeping it too loose. So we want to go ahead and address that. The way that you're going to address that is from all the repetitions that you were doing with the first two exercises. That's why you want to strike first and get all that feedback, right, and, and, and information processing through your nervous system. Because after you throw a bunch of strikes, you're going to realize, hey, this is kind of weird, or this one's hurting my thumb too much, or there's too much pressure, whatever the case may be. You're going to discover this on your own because there's no one size fits all. Everybody's different. So you're going to learn this through your, your personal experience, through your personal practice. So what I really want you to do, speaking of practice, is going back to the same results that we were doing before, or same scenario, in your office, in your home, place that you visit the most or walk by the most, you're gonna go ahead now putting everything together because you've done a bunch of drawing, you've done, to, done a bunch of striking, that's how you gathered a bunch of information to now be able to address your grip. So you're gonna place your flashlight where you've been practicing from, where you're most likely going to be able to draw from, all right? And once again, I'm going to go ahead, draw my flashlight, get into the reverse grip, I'm going to go ahead and throw or deploy 10 different strikes, okay? From there, I'm putting it back in there, keeping a focus on the grip, too tight, too loose, whatever the case may be. I'm gonna go ahead with my left hand, deploy again into reverse grip, and 10 strikes with the flashlight. From there, I'm gonna bring it back into my right hand, I'm gonna place it on the floor, all right? From the floor or the ground, I'm gonna go ahead and pick it up, and you're gonna see, all of a sudden, you might be in uh, forward grip, which nine, nine, nine times out of ten you are, that's why it's so important to practice in that forward grip, even though you might be more partial to the reverse grip, okay? Uh, and when you pick it up off the floor, whatever position is in, go ahead right away and deploy ten vital strikes, okay? Once you're done with those ten, drop your light again, pick it up, whatever position you have it in, go ahead, deploy ten strikes. That's exercise number three. So bottom line is that if you choose to carry a tactical flashlight, especially as a self-defense tool, you gotta practice with it. You gotta put it through its paces. You have to make it part of you. And the more that you do that, the better you're gonna fare in any type of combat or situation. And that's what we wanna do. We wanna get back home you know, to our family, to our tribe, to our loved ones. And that's really what it's all about. That's why we all uh, tend to do our best to try to share the information that we have so that we all learn together. Once again, this is Helder. I hope that you enjoyed this briefing.